So this video we're looking at uh, moving on from uh, a two-point source interference and path difference and um, looking at multiple or many point source interference and that's commonly found in a diffraction grating or in um, give you an example if you look at the bottom of a CD, a compact disc or a DVD um, there's the lines um, running around it act as a diffraction grating and you can get some interesting effects uh, when you look at light reflected from it. Um, so that more relates to the white light example but if you have a little laser pointer you could try shining it onto a CD and look at the reflected um, light rays and see what see what you notice. Um, the other, well no we'll go to more examples later but um, quick sketch for the setup instead of having just the two point source like that you actually end up with uh, have a multiple point source so this is obviously not to scale um, and with with your beam of light coming in um, it's as though you had uh, light rays coming out from all of those uh, little gaps okay so diffraction occurring at all of those gaps and the the waves propagate in all directions as they move out uh, from there and we're not going to dwell too much on that because it's very messy and we're trying to tidy things up a little bit um, with where we're going with the theory. If we consider a screen um, we're going to have uh, all of these interference points so much more interference than with just the two points but we're going to have um, the same um, bright fringes forming um, or similar bright fringes forming with the n equals 0 and 1 and 2 and 1 and so forth as you go. Now um, there's there's a number of differences that you will find when you sh say take a laser light laser standing for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation that's L-A-S-E-R um, so if you take laser light and shine it through a double slit you'll get the interference pattern we saw but the difference is if you shine it through a diffraction grating um, or something that is very similar to a diffraction grating you'll get um, some some really interesting effects and there's, there's three main things we want to focus on um, one is that because for a diffraction grating um, which typically has thousands of um, of slits so all of these are so so small and so much closer together um, so there, there's really da -da 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 -da, they're tiny 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 gaps the gaps are so small between them that they're getting to very similar to the wavelength of that light. So what happens is you get, <coughs> excuse me, you get a much much wider angle of diffraction, much closer to. Because remember, the rule for diffraction is as the gap um, gets to be about the same. So that's the gap spacing gets to be about the same. Uh, distance or spacing as the wavelength of the of, of the, the wave that's coming in that's when you get the maximum diffraction occurring whereas if it's uh, a smaller okay smaller you get less okay less diffraction occurring um, and if it's larger then it's kind of starting to act more like just a single pulse okay um, so uh, so that first point of difference um, your um, your your um, fringes, I guess, they're going to diffract, or, or the fringes aren't diffracting. The light's going to diffract to produce fringes over almost a 180 degree um, range. So all the way around, 180 degree range. You're going to get from way over here. If you had a curved curved screen, you'd have them from way over there all the way, coming around and around. Which is pretty amazing just because the spacing um, is so much smaller okay um, you'll also find that um, I mean for the same reason that um, the bright fringes are going to be widely spread um, and you can look at um, you can look at the formula uh, where are we in lambda equals d sine theta so n are the order of the fringes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, wavelength being the wavelength of the light. Those two don't change, but d, the spacing between um, those, those gaps, has decreased, which means this sine theta part has to increase for the formula to be the same. So that means the theta angle is going to be 
greater. So um, there'll be a greater distance between each of these successive um, fringes. Um, what that does mean um, is that the small, I'm going to jump ahead to that little point, that small angle approximation we made uh, for two point source interference at level 3 physics, that uh, sine theta is approximately equal to tan theta, um, so we could reduce our formula um, by substituting x over L uh, for sine theta. We can't do that with this one because um, the, the the distance here, x, is not really small compared to the distance away from the screen L. So it doesn't work. We can't use the small angle approximation. So we can't use that. Really important to note. Um, and let's see, the third thing um, is because there are a large number of these um, uh, 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 gaps um, or slits or whatever you want to call them, um, you're going to have brighter fringes, so they'll be even brighter than they would be um, with no, uh, sorry, with just the two-point source interference. And part of that is just because you'll get more light coming through. Okay. The other is that you'll have uh, multiple uh, um, waves from, say, uh, 10, 20, 30 uh, slits, all constructively interfering. So your peaks are going to be much, much higher. Okay, so your peaks from when you are adding those waves arriving in phase will be much, much higher, so there's a lot more intensity, a lot more energy um, going in to create those fringes. So that's the, that's the third point. Okay, um, something that's useful is uh, the concept of N. N is the number um, of uh, 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 slits. Per, per meter, okay, or per millimeter, um, and because of the nature of what that means and the spacing for d between um, each of those, um, d is actually equal to one over n, which is a useful formula for us. We can add it to n lambda equals d sine theta um, to help. I should say as well, back on the formula. Um, and the small angle approximation, once again, they people asking questions in test papers for you, they like to confuse you um, by offering you both formulas. Remember, n lambda equals d sine theta and n lambda equals dx over L. And they have to leave it up to you to choose which formula. And it comes down to the small angle approximation again. Most cases, if you have to guess, go for n lambda equals d sine theta. Don't take an approximation. But remember the rule is if, if L is much greater than x, which is the spacing um, for the fringe, then um, you, you can use the small angle approximation, but you can't for diffraction grading because it's much widely spread. All the fringes are much, much widely spread. Okay, now, interesting effect, when you have your diffraction grating, I'm going to redraw this down here, uh, when you have your diffraction grating with white light, so if we send some white light in, this is no longer monochromatic, monochroma, one color, it's white light, it's actually multichromatic. Is that a word? Multi we, we'll, we'll take it, multichromatic. What you'll get from um, knowledge of our formula, um, if you consider one sort of section where you would find a bright fringe, okay, so it might be n equals one, say, um, D does not change, so there's no change for D, and that that angle, remember the angle from the center line, does not change. So, um, oh, excuse me, change that, scrap that. Um, <laughs> your angle is going to change a little bit because you've got a range, don't you? But um, what I was going to say was, your wavelength is different because white light is a combination of many, many, many different wavelengths from a red light around the 600-700 nanometer range um, down to blue light um, which is, let's see, below, that's about three or four hundred nanometers greens four to five hundred in the middle, yes, that's about right um, so with, with different multiple wavelengths, so if you increase the wavelength you will have to increase the angle um, for that sine theta uh, component and you'll get the higher wavelengths further out than the lower wavelengths. So the higher wavelengths further out and the lower wavelengths closer to the center. What that will mean is your white light, knowing the white light's made up of many different colors of many different wavelengths, 
it's going to separate out into your spectrum. So you'll get this awesome spectrum produced using a diffraction grating. Just go, purely going back to because different wavelengths will refract different amounts. Um, and will, will diffract different amounts. There you go, that's the word I should have used. Um, that's particularly handful for, for um, spectrum analysis of stars um, to see what the the chemicals produced in the stars are. We get into a little bit more of that when we talk about the Doppler effect um, and in nuclear physics. <coughs> um, but it's also good for analysing um, substances here on Earth. You can heat things up and they produce a spectrum and you can uh, you can separate, or they'll produce light, and you can separate that light into a spectrum um, on a screen by shining it through a diffraction grating. And then from the spectrum, it, the spectrum's a little bit like a unique fingerprint of, of light produced from the elements in that substance, you can then tell what it is. It's very, very handy. Now, you've seen this before. You've seen this before, I'm sure. And I was talking earlier about the bottoms of CDs and uh, DVDs, compact discs. Um, and uh, other places you might have seen them is those funky glasses you can get, which have, um, uh, they make you see rainbows when you look in them. Um, and they're usually made up of diffraction grating. You can't see the slits because they're too small, but they can, you can still see the light being um, diffracted by the diffraction grating. And that's super cool. So that's diffraction gratings. Um, we've covered a lot of ground. I may break this one up too. But we'll see how we go. Thanks for visiting the Physics Lounge anyway.